Welcome, welcome to Religious Ed. My name is Tish, this is my husband Mike. Hello. Today what we're going to talk about is the Holy Spirit, okay? And um, we'll be explaining about that and we'll be talking about the fruits and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So first what we'd like to do is start with our prayers, okay? We're going to sing our prayers, okay? Remember, so is... please sing along with us, okay? And then repeat. You repeat what you mean. We do. just repeat what, what the John Berlin says, okay? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among all women. Blessed are you among all women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of death. Now and at the hour of death. Amen. Amen. Very good. That was great. So the next one is the Our Father. You can sing both if you want. Uh, or the way we go like this, that's your turn, okay? Either way you want to do it, okay? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. That was good. That was great. This next one, if you're not standing up, you might want to stand up for this one. And we'll kind of turn so that we can, whatever direction you're in, you can copy us. That way you don't accidentally do the opposite of what we're doing, okay? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That was great. Wasn't that fun? Okay, now we're going to do, we'll start with our, a reading. I'm going to do a reading from the Bible. Take out your Bibles. The Bibles that we gave you, okay? And it's on Pentecost, okay? Jesus continued to appear to the apostles for many days after he had been raised from the dead. 
Forty days after the resurrection, he and his disciples were on a hillside outside Jerusalem. He blessed them and he told them to go back to Jerusalem to wait for the fulfillment of the Father's promise to send the Spirit upon him. Then he was lifted up into the clouds. There he sits at the right hand of the Father for all the time. Ten days later, the apostles and Mary were gathered in the upper room to pray. Suddenly they heard a loud noise like a strong wind. When they looked around, they saw that with small flames of fire over the heads of each one of them. The wind and the fire were the sign of the Holy Spirit that had come upon them to fill them with God's light in a special way. Now there were many people in Jerusalem who had come up to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, a feast celebrated 50 days after Passover. There were, few, there were Jews from all over the world, and they spoke many different languages. Yet when Peter, filled with the courage of the Holy Spirit, he came out to speak to them about Jesus and all he had done for them. They could all understand him as he was speaking in their own language. At first they thought he and the others were drunk, but they were filled with the Holy Spirit. As they listened to the words of Peter, they realized that this was not the case. Peter told them that Jesus was the answer to the promises that God had made to his people on throughout the whole testament. He spoke of how Jesus and worked miracles and signs and wonders filled with the power of the God, but how their teacher had put him to death. Yet God would not allow death to be defeat Jesus, for God had raised them from the dead. Now God had sent his spirit upon the followers of Jesus so that they could be a new Israel, one that was free from sin. Many of the people in the crowd listened to what Peter had said. They were deeply filled, and when Peter invited them to come forward and to be baptized, some 3,000 of them decided to do so. Jesus' followers came to be called Christians, and they tried to live the message that Jesus had proclaimed to them. They shared everything they had with each other, and no one had to suffer any need. All who saw them could only say to them, see how much these Christians, how much they love each other. And this is the gospel of the word. Thank you. Okay, now Michael's going to explain, explain what you're doing. Okay, so with the Holy Spirit coming upon us, okay, so once again, as you heard in the story, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and the flames come down, you know. Now, this is a different kind of fire. The fire that you cook with or the fire in the fireplace burns, and you have to be very careful because you can get hurt. This fire is Holy Spirit. This is a little different. It's, uh, it lands on your, their heads, but it doesn't burn them, okay? So it's a different fire. So this is Holy Spirit, and it shows and depicts that it gives us gifts and things that Jesus had and used to help other people. And that's what we're here for with this one, is to tell you about a little more detail about these different um, gifts and fruits of the Spirit. So once again, here's on a, a little banner that hangs over. Uh, and it's, uh, you see the spirit, which is the bird, okay? And it has the dove there and the it's a white ra rays coming down there, blessing us with all the gifts and stuff. So that helps us uh, understand that. Then here's one. This is a stole. So a priest wears it, how? How does it wear? That's right, a priest, it, he would wear it around his neck and it would go straight down. How about a deacon? How does a deacon wear it? That's correct, it's diagonal. 
Now, this is the one for Pentecost. Once again, the bird pointing down to bring us this uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit and stuff. And then here you have the little flames there uh, coming down upon us to give us all these graces and things and tools, in a sense, to help us do better uh, in all the things that we do. Just want to remind you that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity. Remember, the Holy Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, okay? So we're reminded of the Holy Trinity, okay? Now what I'd like to talk to you about is the fruits of the Holy Spirit, okay? Now, the, the Holy Spirit, remember, guides us and directs us, okay, to do God's will, okay? That means, like, to help others, to serve others, okay? Um, now, this is a bowl of fruit, right? We have a lemon, a citrus fruit. We have an orange, right, a citrus fruit. We have an apple, okay? Now, these different types of fruit are good for us, right? Yes, they are. Because, for example, orange gives us vitamin C, which is good for our bones and our teeth. And apples, you know, help us with our hair, you know. And lemons are good. And it helps us also with vitamin C and citrus. Okay. So fruits are very important to us in our daily life, you know. We try to have an apple a day, bananas for potassium, you know, which is good for our blood. So we... We have a fruit every day. Well, the spiritual fruits of the Holy Spirit, there's 10 of them, okay? And so I'd like to, what I will do is I will, I will mention it and Michael will explain it, okay? The first fruit is love, okay? So love, we have uh, that special love. It's like an unconditional love, like Jesus has for us. So when we do, are we perfect? Do we do everything right? No. But does Jesus still love us? Yes, he does. That's unconditional love. That's a special love. Um, does your mom and dad love you? Even when you do something wrong? Yes, they still love you. That's unconditional love. Now, mom and dad, they perfect all the time? Or they upset you sometimes? You still love them? That's unconditional love. So we all have that unconditional love. So are we supposed to keep it to ourselves or are we supposed to share it? That's right. We're supposed to share it just like Jesus did. So we try to be as loving to everyone as we can be. The next fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. So joy. So we're supposed to always try to have a happy face. We might not be feeling so good or something like that, but we're always supposed to try to be cheerful and happy and look for the good things happening in that day and not dwell on the one bad thing that might have happened or we got in trouble that day or something like that. We try to get out of that and look for the good things, okay? Did Jesus have everything work out for him the way he wanted it? No, he didn't. Did it stop him? No. He kept on going with joy, rejoicing in the fact of how many were following and maybe some weren't, which made him sad. That's how we're supposed to try to do the same thing. Don't dwell on the one thing or two things that go wrong, but dwell on things that did go well and try to keep going. The next fruit of the Holy Spirit is faith. So faith is something that uh, we have in the side of us. A lot of times we don't find out how much faith we have until something goes wrong. For instance, if uh, you, well, like this uh, virus here, this COVID, uh, unfortunately we have to stay at home and everything like that. We can't go to school and stuff. So sometimes we might get mad and not want to do anything. Well, is that having faith? No. That's, that's the only opposite of faith. That's not having any faith. Faith in a situation like this is you still say, Lord, you know, and you pray and you ask for things. You ask for help for certain people that might be sick. Uh, and you look for the good things. You try to find something to do to uh, have fun and involve your brothers and sisters and mom and dad. 
So those that's faith. Having faith is you still pray and you still hang in you. You make the best of what is going on. And that's having faith in Jesus, his life, and the things that he was hoping we would still help other people. Okay. The next fruit of the gift is goodness. So goodness, hopefully we always try to do the good thing and not, oh, what can I do to bother my brother or sister? No, we don't want to do that. We want to, goodness is the idea. So if your brother or sister needs help with something, mom and dad need help, this is a good opportunity to uh, do uh, different things of help. Now, remember, he's saying goodness. So what we kind of almost hope, and it's thinking a little different, is when you do something good for somebody, do you hope they say thank you or reward you? Sometimes that happens. But actually, you don't want to. You don't want them. You want them to forget to say thank you or reward you because who will reward you for doing that instead? That's right. God will. And that will be a lot bigger and better. So in goodness, like Jesus did as he went around and did goodness, no matter where he was or even if it was a bad area or things not going well, he still did good things. Did he expect a reward or anything? Nothing. Because he knew God would give him the biggest reward. And good luck in different things. So that's what we hope. So when you do goodness, you do goodness not because you're hoping for something, but you hope God will recognize it and reward you in a different way, in a bigger way. So that's what we have to remember. Now we'll be talking about patience. Patience. That's a hard one, even for me. How many of you ever had to go in a long line? Now lines are going to be even more because you have to go in line to everything. Sometimes you get in line to get in line. Uh, now we see that at some supermarkets. So that is uh, something where we have, uh, have to have patience. And sometimes our brother and sister, we might think they're bothering us or something. Or how come they don't know this or something? Well, they're not old enough to know that yet. And God's actually hoping you would share it with them. So we have to have patience for other people. We have to have patience for um, things that happen in life or like waiting in line. Have to have patience putting on the mask and all those kinds of things. Even though they're not the most comfortable things. But we're trying to be as safe. We're trying to do our part in being safe and safe with others. So having patience. And hopefully someday things will go back to uh, a more normal in, in a sense and stuff. Okay? So patience. Try to catch yourself in, from getting upset. And next Holy Spirit gift a fruit is peace. Peace. Peace is uh, not that... Uh, Two people are fighting or something, and you jump in the middle and say, stop in the name of God. But no, don't do that. They'll probably both hit you. So don't do that. That's not the kind of peace you're talking about. Peace you're talking about is peace with yourself that, uh, like I said, uh, if the day's not going so well, well it's okay. I, I, I know God's with me, and something good will happen. Let's see, what can I do to, to start that goodness, maybe? And I'll go help somebody. So your peace in mind, peace in yourself. And then usually, because you're at peace, people want to be around you, and they will feel better at peace too. So how many of you ever snuggled up to your brother, your sister, or your mom, and dad, just ah, that kind of peace? That's the peace. It's the feel, warm, fuzzy feeling peace. And that's what Jesus had for us, and he wants you now. Do you keep it to yourself? No. He wants you to share it. So he wants you to snuggle up to mom or dad or something. But you don't have to say that. Just oh. That's what he wants you to do. And that's how you spread peace. And if people just, ah, oh, makes you feel good. The next fruit is self-control. Self-control, that's a hard one. That's the one where sometimes we get upset. And, you know, we're all different, so we get upset in different ways. 
And then we also have rules at home and places too uh, about being upset and uh, self-control. For instance, when you're at school, you get mad at somebody. Are you supposed to go, <laughs> no, you're gonna get in trouble and that's not supposed to be what you do. Now you're home, can you do that too? Probably not supposed to. But um, once again, that's self-control. When we get mad or upset or things don't go our way, we have to adjust. Remember, not everything went Jesus's way either. And he had some really hard days. Remember, he got crucified. Remember, they put the crown on his head with the thorns. Uh, remember, people spit on him, called him names, all those types of things. People pushed him and stuff like that. So we have rules trying to stop that too, but sometimes people do that. So our, we're supposed to, in case we get upset, catch ourselves from doing that. So self-control, try not to fight, try not to get mad too much. If you get upset or angry, hopefully your mom or dad will let you go outside and go or scream or something and then come back in. Hi, everyone. That's self-control, controlling yourself. So, Or go outside and shoot some baskets or something. Uh, or go in the garden or something and then come back in when you're ready. Something. Hopefully you'll be able to do something like that so that you don't get, to, and then get in trouble for the wrong things, okay? The next fruit we have is kindness. Kindness is something Jesus did. Now, are you supposed to be kind to your friends only or everybody? That's right, everybody. Jesus was kind to everyone. Even those that called him names and didn't like him, he was still kind to them. And so that's what we're supposed to do. When you go to school and stuff, is everyone kind to you? No, not necessarily. So keep that in mind. But are we still supposed to be kind? Yes. Keep in mind now, sometimes people don't know what that is. And when you're kind to someone, that's what is it? Why I liked it, but why? Was, and they don't do things right. But by your example of how to be kind to other people, by listening to them, hearing their stories, you telling your story, and things of that nature, hopefully you'll teach them how to be kind. Because sometimes maybe if they have a really mean brother or sister. They don't know what kindness is because they're not kind to each other. Hopefully, by what you do, you'll show them how to do that. So kindness can be something very important. Okay, so those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'd like to talk about have, when you get a gift, a present, are you excited? Yes. You get all excited. Because, you, you know, you thank the person that's giving the gift, you know. You take into consideration. But you're wondering, what's inside the gift? It's for me. I'm excited. So what you do is you want to open it as soon as you can, right? And you want to see what did they give you. And when you open it, it's like, wow, they were thinking of me. They knew what I like, you know. And so you're very special. It's very special for you, this gift. Well, the Holy Spirit also gives us gifts, presents that we get excited. They're so special for us, you know. And we're thankful. We're thankful to the Holy Spirit that's giving us gifts so that we can use to help others. So we're going to explain about the gifts, okay? Now, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we're going to explain in a slightly different way. Uh, so we're going to have items. So literally, she's going to read the gift. And I'm going to bring a present. And you got to try to guess what's inside. Then it's an item that reminds us of a gift that we got from God. Okay? And then we'll try to see if we can remember these gifts as we continue on. Okay. So... Okay. The first gift is the gift of knowledge. It helps us to know ourselves and the world around us. It helps to know where our faith is leading us and what a church says about us. 
Knowledge is the gift that makes us smart about ourselves. What is it? What do you think it is? So I have the gift here of something that makes us smart. What would that be in the gift? Okay. So we know it, well, the more and more stuff we learn, the more, the more knowledge we have, right? Well, Smarties. The little candy called Smarties. We'll consider that uh, you know, to remind us of what knowledge is, okay? The next gift. In confirmation, we receive the gift of understanding. Now this helps us to untie the knots, to straighten out our lives, to deal with our problems. Understanding is letting the word of God have room in our lives. So what do you think that gift might look like? Well, he said untie. How about a knotted pretzel? Huh? We'll use that to remind us of straightening out our lives. And that is the gift of understanding. understanding. The next gift is wisdom is the gift of the Holy Spirit that helps us to see and understand God's plan in our lives and in the world. Wisdom helps us to say, aha, I finally understand. So that gift, hmm, what could we use for that? Let's see. Oh. A card that says, aha. <laughs> so that reminds us of what gift again? Wisdom. Wisdom. So we'll set that right here. Courage. Courage is the gift of the Holy Spirit that helps us walk out into the world and feel prepared. It gives us the stick to it tipness to stand up. For what we believe. Okay. And so what do you think we might have as a gift to remind us of that one? That's right. Gum. Sticky, huh? All right. So we'll put that there. Now, let's review. What do we have here? So the first one, Smarties, remember, remind us of what? That's right. Knowledge. Then we have the, the pretzel to straighten out our lives to help us with our understanding. Okay. Then we have aha, uh -huh, and that reminds us of wisdom to be wise. Okay. Then we have the gun. That was to stick to it, and that was to have that courage to stick to it and keep going to finish what we started and things of that nature, or to start something new. Okay, now we'll continue. The next gift of the Holy Spirit is reverence. It helps us to see God in everything around us. It teaches us to treat our fragile world gently. So what do you think we have in the box for that one? Well, we chose in a leaf. Remember, a leaf is very fragile. And it's a wonder how the tree can sit there and make all those leaves and then drop them and turn around and make more and all that stuff. The wow of what's going on. The wonder. The next gift of the Holy Spirit is wonder. It Wonder keeps us awestruck by the power and the beauty of God in our lives. Wonder and awe explode like a starburst when we let the Holy Spirit into our lives. Okay, so what do you think we have in there? She kind of gave you a clue. That's right, a starburst candy. Uh-huh, starburst candy. 
And that reminds us of? Wonder and awe. Wonder and awe, okay. The last gift of the Holy Spirit is right judgment. And that encourages us to talk things over so that we can make choices that let us feel comfortable with ourselves afterwards. Right judging keeps us from feeling like suckers. Okay. So in this box, what do you think we got to help us do the right thing the right way? That's right. Sucker, but dum-dum suckers. So we're not a dum-dum. Okay, we do things the right way for the right reason. So let's take a look now at what we have. So we have the Smarties so that we have more knowledge and learn more. We have the pretzel that help us. We untie it and strap it and do straight with our lives so we can understand how things work and understand others. <clears throat> we have aha moments when we realize I know a lot of things and what should we do with that? Good things or bad? That's right, good things. So we use our wisdom for good things. You know, you could be very wise and rob a bank, but I don't think that's what Jesus had in, our, in mind, right? No, he would want you to plan on maybe a party or something good. Yes, so wisdom. It's good to have wisdom. Then you have the stick to it, and that's the courage. Reminds you of the, you know, hanging in there when tough. Like if you're in a game or on a team, you know, they're all counting on each other. You have the courage to keep going. Even if you got an owie on your elbow and you keep going. That's the idea, the courage to keep going. Then do you remember what the um, leaf was there? That's right. It was reverence and reminding us of all the things that are around us. Uh, God made it a very important, they have a reason. So we, we have to realize, oh, take a moment, in a sense, smell the roses. Notice what's around you and how neat it is, okay? Then we have the starburst, that's right. We remember what it was? That's right, the wonder that we, oh, and we realize what Jesus does for us. We notice the things where, hey, Jesus had to help me on that one or that wouldn't have happened. Or Mary or Holy Spirit or some of that. We know there was extra help. And that wonder helps us open our minds to see that. Otherwise, you might might even miss it. Okay? So we'll tell. Then we have the dum-dum, remember? And that's to help us to have right judgment. To remember that things are right or wrong and to try to do everything right for the right reason in the right way okay and all these are the gifts of the holy spirit these are a little harder than the fruits of the spirits uh, and these are very um important and we all have them we might not realize it some we might have more of courage then maybe we do wisdom, or we might have more wisdom than maybe uh, reverence. So, but we have a balance of all of these, and Jesus wants us to go, hmm, okay. and think about that. Now, the next thing is, we all have these in our heart. Ah. If I gave you this envelope, to put all these gifts in it, we'll pretend this is your heart. Could you do that? Yes. However, this one's glued shut. Their heart is closed because they're too mad at somebody. They want to get somebody back. They want to hurt somebody. They want what they have. Because I want that too. We get caught up in those feelings and our heart is closed. We're not able to use the gifts because we're doing the opposite. So even more than this, let's say that's your heart. Jesus wants you to have a bigger heart. 
and he wants it to be open so that your heart is not closed, it's open, and that you take all these gifts and have them in your heart and you try to use them every day with mom, dad, brothers, sisters, strangers, anybody you meet. And this is in your heart. Does he ever want you to seal it? No. Always wants you to have an open heart. Doesn't this remind you of the sacred heart of Jesus where his heart is outside? Remember unconditional love? He'd like you to have the same kind of a heart helping everybody you possibly can. Okay, so on June 6th, Saturday, we'll be here at St. Rose parking lot from 2.30 to 4.30, and we'll be giving out these items, Michael, you wanna explain, uh, during that time, okay? It'll be a drive-through pickup, okay? Okay, this one is the Holy Spirit coloring book. It does have, um, different captions at the top and examples of the things that we were talking about to help her remember. And there's that bird, Holy Spirit, coming down upon. Okay, so always reminding us of that. Then this one gives you more examples of Holy Spirit and where we saw that. And remember, the very first time we really took notice of this was probably when the Holy Spirit came to Mary and said, you'll want to have a baby. And say what? <laughs> she and then she realized that the uh, Holy Spirit was going to come upon her, and she was going to have a baby named Jesus. And then so that starts it all right there, in that sense. Uh, and then Jesus is baptized, and the bird appears again, and then Jesus preaches uh, the promises of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit with the apostles. Then there's uh, Pentecost when they, the day that came and the little flames on the forehead there. And so uh, we have those. Then we have it uh, spirit in today's day, uh, well, how we celebrated in baptism and confirmation. Uh, that Holy Spirit, we try to bring and remind all these things, the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We try to remind ourselves of these. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to use these, huh? And then so we remind ourselves of that. And then it has... Uh, more toward the future there than it has how we honor the Holy Spirit. It has those gifts that we just mentioned, uh, different words, uh, but it means the same thing. And then uh, the prayer to the Holy Spirit there, okay? And then the final thing we have for you is the holy water bottle. Uh, remember, because like this, we're supposed to share our love and have courage, knowledge, understanding. So we understand God is very special and Jesus is. We have to have the wisdom that we know the good things. We recognize all the things that are out there. We try to do the right thing the right way. We have reverence for everything God made. And we have the courage. Courage that we might bless ourselves. Like this, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Bless our room. Or we can bless mom and dad. Take the Holy Bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, do that to your somebody who's not feeling so well in the uh, in your family, grandma, grandpa, I'm sure they love it. Uh, mom and dad aren't feeling good. You say, hey, can I bless you, mom and dad? And, stuff. and then you can bless them. Okay. If you have a brother or sister or something and it's driving you crazy, bless them. <laughs> okay? That's all right. Okay, so we'd like to thank you. Thank you for coming to class. We hope you enjoyed it. We look forward next week to see you again, okay? And have a good week. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.